Hello guys. Welcome to Diablo the Primordial. This video is the continuation video after Adelman and Wenty combination. So if you have not watched it, then please watch it. The link is in the description. And please check out my second channel Top Anime Sensei for the light novel of Tensura. So without any further delay let's start. But before we start please like, subscribe and press the bell icon so you don't miss the updates. They had, in their own ways, began their action in order to help Demon Lord Ruminus who is their respected and adored master. Chapter 209. Sprout of Envy. Guy and Chloe have been locked in combat for three consecutive days. Although neither of them are taking it seriously, fatal attacks are mixed in every so often. They are probing each other, trying to discern the scope of their opponent's strength. Die, Calamity Claw. Naive. Chloe received the attack that Guy released towards her with the spirit sword she wielded. Her spirit armament has evolved into a god-class weapon. It hasn't been destroyed, even while she's used it to receive attacks from the strongest demon lord, Guy. Not just that, she makes use of the sword's capabilities to repel Guy's attacks. Chloe moves in for a counterattack. But, strength escapes from Chloe's body. She began coughing up blood, and blood started flowing from her eyes and nose. The previous attack was supposed to have been perfectly parried, but, that was only what it looked like on the surface. An attack invisible to the naked eye made contact with Chloe, and was attempting to take her life. Die, Calamity Claw. Without any change in expression, Chloe evaded the attack with large exaggerated movements. Then, she took stance with her sword pointing towards Guy, like nothing had happened. Her face, which should have been bloodied after receiving Guy's attack, was now back to her normal pretty face as though nothing ever happened. It was a mysterious phenomenon, as though showing Guy's earlier attack hadn't happened. Ahahaha. As expected of the hero. Not shabby at all. I'm pretty amazed you managed to avoid this attack. Right. You'd probably be dying right about now, if you received that attack instead. Chloe gave a mild response, in return to Guy's honest praise. She didn't give much of a response, to the many other taunts that came after, that was because, she knew what he said was all true. Which was the reason, for how complicated she felt on the inside. The attack that guy used, Calamity Claw, was an attack that carried an intense poison property. But it wasn't something on the level of a poison, it was an attack that infected the target with an infectious virus, which also corrodes the mind, starting from the point of contact. In fact, Chloe has really died once to this attack. Although her absolute defense automatically blocks incoming attacks, it doesn't stop the virus which spread to her from her sword. As such, Chloe met her demise from the virus that was spread unto her from receiving Guy's attack. Using ultimate skill spacetime king, Yog sothoth she successfully evades the attack, after remembering the memory of dying once in the future. After experiencing the event once, she returns to the past. In other words, remembering a memory from the future. To the opponent facing her, it'd simply look like Chloe made the lucky choice of evading the attack, but the truth is far from that. With great confidence, Chloe was making the best choices in defense she could choose. But, even though she is totally evading Guy's attacks by making use of her ability to remember future events, Chloe had no margin for making mistakes. Compared to Veldora, one of the strongest existences, whom she had battled in the past, she needs to take all of Guy's attacks seriously. Even though there was no intent of taking the fight seriously from either side, attacks that are lethal get mixed in nonchalantly, it wasn't a situation where she could be complacent. Intricately cunning, Guy released attacks that meticulously attempted to set up his opponent in layer upon layers of traps. But his intentions have been fairly obvious, as he has been using attacks that could be recovered from, even if the attacks were able to outright kill Chloe. He was planning to get Rimuru to owe him one, from releasing Chloe from her curse. But, Chloe knew, that such a feat was impossible. The reason was that Chloe remembered, in one of the instances where she died, Guy tried to undo the curse but regretfully mumbled, so it failed. This proved that the curse that Yuki cast on her wasn't something that could be so easily removed. So Chloe moved according to what she was ordered to do, which is to keep Guy occupied. And from that, she understood just how nonsensically strong Guy is. He's seen through all of Chloe's attacks. Even though neither of them are taking this fight seriously, Chloe has already died three times. It wasn't caused by any single unavoidable attack, but was more of a series of moves which ended up leading to her death. 
It looked as though she was being given choices, but in fact, the whole fight has been moving in whichever direction that guy wanted. There was once, where she died due to her own carelessness. She made the choice to try and evade an attack by stopping time, but ended up getting her heart pierced. This simply means, that guy can move normally even when time is stopped. After remembering that result, Chloe has foregone the usage of time stopping abilities, as all it would do was let her opponent know she can stop time. Guy has not made use of time stopping in his attacks. If he did that, Chloe would also be able to move, which meant that knowledge of her being a space-time type ability user would be made known to Guy. But Guy wouldn't make such a simple attack. On this point, he was an opponent which was very different when compared to Veldora. Having absolute confidence in his skills, he wasn't one who would use such ability-driven attacks. Which was why, Chloe was embarrassed at the fact that she made such a mistake herself. When one releases an attack, one needs to take into account the possibility of the attack being guarded, so there was a need to chain attacks to the point of a finishing blow. This turn of events got Chloe to reaffirm this need. This was something she was supposed to have understood, from her long journey. Chloe was reflecting on her own actions, as she didn't notice she has gotten negligent, because she had attained an ability which was all too powerful. And once again, she confronts Guy. If they both went at this seriously, the situation would probably be a whole lot more different than it is now. Guy wouldn't have the chance to play around comparatively, and Chloe had the confidence to defeat Guy with her full power absolute blade flash. But, if it was an all-out brawl against Guy without the use of any abilities, there was almost no doubt that Chloe would be defeated. That was just how powerful ultimate skill spacetime king, Yogg Sothoth, was. Which was also why it wasn't a good thing, that she has been so reliant on it up till now. Through this battle with Guy, Chloe was brought back to the basics, she returned to the moment with her honest feelings and renewed focus. Guy squinted at the appalling results. He has yet to meet such a formidable foe, ever since his encounter with White Ice Dragon Velzard. He prided himself to have become even stronger than before, but looks like this still wasn't enough. Chloe never fell for Guy's traps, another supposedly fatal attack whiffs, his many feints mixed into his attacks were all seen through. Though neither of them are taking this seriously, would he be able to win if he did? Even if he asks this question it's not like he has the answer to it would be his honest thought. What this means, is that he has to acknowledge it. The fact that, the true hero, Chloe Obel, is an existence that was equal to Guy Crimson. What strength. Guy let out a content snicker. Here he was thinking of defeating Chloe and removing the curse that was plaguing her, as a card he can play against Demon Lord Rimuru, but things aren't going as planned. Chloe, was an even stronger being than Guy has assumed her to be. For Guy, he was already at the point of, a farce? No shit dude. Against Chloe's ultra first class sword arm, Guy was unarmed. At this point, this was more of an insult than anything, so Guy drew his sword whilst thinking of such thoughts. Take pride in the fact, that you have managed to make me draw my sword. As he said that to Chloe, he pulls a sword out of another dimension. Demon Sword Earth has been yielded to Milam. To replace that, he created Demon Sword World. It was the strongest sword in existence, forged from the hardest physical element known as the Star Heart. Compared to Milam's sword, this sword has been maintained constantly, and it gave off a rainbow-colored luster. The Demon Sword was pulsing, as it was gripped in Guy's hand. Suppressing the waves emanating from the sword, he took a stance facing Chloe. He had the intention of enjoying a pure duel of only swordplay. He was confident in his chances of victory, against Rudra or Velzard. But, as he faced Chloe, the strongest hero, he had no such confidence in being victorious. This was what it really meant, to be on equal terms. Although he has been treating Leon and Velzard as though he would a friend, deep inside he knew that neither of them could be called equal to himself. That was why, he was elated. This is much more than I could have ever hoped for, hero Chloe. With tensions as high as that one time when he took on stellar dragon king Veldanava, Guy confronts Chloe. There was someone observing the battle between the two of them. It was white ice dragon Velzard. Seeing that Guy is enjoying himself, she bit her lip. That which was swirling within her innermost thoughts, was a searing blaze. Anger? No, it's something else. It was envy. Velzard has been envious for the longest time, ever since her brother stellar dragon king Veldanava acknowledged Guy. Staying humorous about the topic, she kept her true thoughts away from Guy. What was coursing through that heart of hers now, were the contents of a message that she received a few days ago. 
There was a special form of telepathic communication limited to the true dragons, it was a message from her supposedly deceased elder brother Veldanava, that has her bewildered. Would you mind destroying Guy, for my sake? She lets out a sigh, as she thought of the contents. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. And if you guys have not watched my earlier videos, then please watch them. The links are in the description. And please check out my other channel Top Anime Sensei for the light novel of Tensura. And don't forget to like, subscribe and press the bell icon so you don't miss the updates.